welcome back to Solyndra. Got the Fiat. We're headed to the store because I am going to buy that cultivator that's on the sale page for ten grand. I've already been over to the fields over here with the Deutz and fertilized the fields. I say field. I didn't have to fertilize the other one because that's already got 100% fertilizer into it. So the Lemkin, uh, yeah, this cultivator right here does require 180 horsepower. We got 185. We are pushing the limits of this Fiat right here because it's kind of hilly over here. So I'm kind of wondering if this is going to be able to manage it going up and down the hill. Well, down the hill should be a problem. Up the hill could be a little bit of a problem. Now, the cultivator is uh, bigger than I thought it was going to be. Which seems to be the case on this map. Am I even going to be able to get around town with this thing? I think so. Uh, luckily, there's no traffic or people walking around. The only other signs of life other than the animals on this map is Earl over at the livestock market. Been a while since I've uh, been over to visit him. Yeah, but anyways, the bigger field that we bought uh, just recently that's uh, already been cultivated... No stones in it, by the way, either, and you can see 100% fertilized. So, yeah, it doesn't say it needs to be cultivated. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's it been, I don't know. We, we won't really know until we plant, I think, uh, what we got here. But our fields over here haven't been mulched slash cultivated. I don't know if cultivating and mulching is the same thing. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and give it a go. We really don't need to cultivate the fields because our drill is a direct drill. See, if I stand in the field, does it say it needs mulching? It doesn't say it needs anything, honestly. So let's go ahead and lower this down. Now, I may not be doing this all the time, but uh, it's been requested enough to do some mulching, cultivating to get the extra 2%. So we'll have to give it a little bit of a try. And yeah, this could be this could be pushing our fiat just a little bit too much. I may just have to go ahead and do it on a downhill slope. Yeah, that's not liking it at all. I mean, this is not much of a hill per se. Of course, now I'm trying to go up a steep incline here. Okay, let's go ahead and lift it on up, and I'll go to the other end of the field, and we'll come on down. If it doesn't work, and then uh, it's not a big deal, we can always go ahead and just sell the cultivator on back. Probably take a little bit of a hit onto it. If you're asking yourself, well, why don't you just get yourself a bigger, bigger tractor? Because we do have a limit on this series of, you know, nothing over 200 horsepower. So, uh, with the Fiat being at 185, we're, we're just about there. I mean, I probably could find a tractor that's at 190, maybe even at 200. I said, can't go over 200. Uh, if we found something exactly at 200, I could do that, I suppose. But we'll see how we get along here. All this has to get an extra 2%. But I fertilized the fields, uh, this field right here before I cultivate it because now when I go around with the direct drill later on, I'm hoping it gets the second stage of fertilizer down into it. We shall see. Why are you struggling even going... I don't know why you would struggle going here. Now, of course, the cultivator is a little worn because it's been used. Yep, just that we're pushing the Fiat to the limit with the uh, the horsepower limitations. So this will take me a while to get done, so I'm not going to try to go uphill with it. It'll just take forever. I'm just better off going up here and going back on down. So this may be the only year that I try to do the cultivating, at least with this setup here. There are other cultivators, but they would have been a little bit more expensive, I think. And I kind of thought, since we had a little bit of leniency with the, the rating on this, that it, you know sometimes it works better than what you think it would, and then other times, uh, not so much. 
economy, we can go back to no man's land when we had the T6 New Holland. And I think the horsepower in that T6 was like 160. And we got a drill that required 180 horsepower. And that T6 had no, I want to say no issues. Um, it did slow down a little bit here and there on the, on the speed. But overall, it did rather well. So in the month of April, which is, of course, next month, we'll be putting down sorghum here in both fields. I was going to put wheat and barley, wheat or barley, into that field over there, but there is no spring wheat or barley on this map. So I uh, got to put a crop in that we can definitely use, and sorghum is the only crop left. I could have came over here and put some, well, I still could actually put oats in over here because we're still in the month of March, but... I'm going to go with sorghum. I definitely going to be easier going back up here and just keep working downhill. Although this implement is rather a decent size for the fields that we got. I don't have to get a hundred percent because like I said we do have a direct drill so any spots I miss our cedar is going to have no problem putting the, the crop on in I may have a look at the true mulchers themselves to see how much horsepower requirement they take and the working width of it as well I always have this debate with myself with the roller and the mulcher giving us a grand total of 5% extra yield. Is it worth it? Uh, with the amount of diesel that you're going to spend every year doing it in your fields, buying the equipment, repairing the equipment. It probably helps enough, but is it enough to make you, you know, spend your time and, and money on it? Now, with precision farming turned on, um, rolling doesn't do anything. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember if it does or doesn't. I don't think it does actually anything, rolling. Uh, molting or cultivating is something you would have to do, of course, if you don't have a direct drill. But with precision farming, direct drill is going to give you a better score than a non-direct drill. Going way back to FS15 when I was playing, and I, then I found out with direct drills you don't need to cultivate a field. I've always used direct drills pretty much ever since. If I'm doing cultivating, it's because I'm doing a contract in someone else's field. And I could be wrong, this may not even be kind of considered as mulching. So I may have spent $10,000 on this cultivator for nothing. I don't know if a cultivator considers it as mulching. Uh, does it say in the description, actually? That one just says it prepares, prepares fields. It doesn't actually say it's technically a like a mulcher. So, let's see. This one's three meter wide. About the same amount of money I spent on it. Requires 150 horsepower. So, the horsepower requirement is a lot better. Uh, working with, I think we uh, this is a three meter. And currently, we have a five meter. So, yeah, a lot smaller. That's why the horsepower power requirement is not as much. But we'll see how it goes when I plant, see if I get the extra 2% with this. If I don't, then uh, this is something I really definitely don't need because if it's not going to give me the 2%, then uh, why am I doing it with this uh, implement? It's just not going to help me out at all. And there might be a few of you out there already saying, nope, that doesn't work, stop doing it. Ah, well, I'll, I'll, know, I'll know tomorrow we'll be playing the sorghum. 
Well, it seems as soon as the Fiat finds the right gear for the cultivator, it goes uh, fine. Sometimes it doesn't quite find the right gear right away, and other times it picks up very quickly. Uh, like this time, it should be up into fourth, and right now it's stuck in third. I probably should do the manual shifting myself. Of course, uh, it was working fine until I brought you guys back, and then now it's like, uh, no, we're going to stick in third gear. Usually it gets right for fourth gear, and I can do, do seven miles an hour, no problem. All right, now let's go down to first gear, I guess. But now that I got this whole field almost cultivated, and hopefully mulched, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm actually mulching it or not, but now it looks like one field. Before, you know, it was like uh, two separate fields. We plowed to merge them together. And there were different crops and different fields. So we had stubble, not stubble. But now that we're getting all cultivated into one, now it looks like a, a, a true one field. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad uh, a couple people mentioned way back when, when I was talking about maybe just having two fields back here. But I think... The field that we got here will stay this size here. And uh, maybe the grass field merged with those two fields there and just leave that field over there by itself. When I bring this cultivator back to the farm, I'll have to go ahead and repair it. Because either way, if, I, if this doesn't do the trick uh, for the mulching, I'll uh, go ahead and sell it because it does it's no good, but I gotta repair it to get a better value for it on the return. One more pass and we'll have it, and I'm pretty much done for the month of March. Uh, just double check on the animals, make sure everything's uh, all set to go, which it should be. And then, uh, yeah, April, wake up, grab our John Deere planter, or seed drill, come over here and plant some sorghum, which should, uh, should be kind of easy to do. Come on, Fiat, pick up, pick up the right gear. Yeah, maybe I gotta, I gotta go with my key bindings to find out what gears they, uh, what buttons it is to shift. Once it finds the right gear and we get going, it, it's fine. Although I'm not going to try to do this uphill because it's just not going to work out too well for me. And I will get this little piece over here that I missed. So I really don't have a place to put the cultivator. So for now, I'm just going to leave it over here, like I said, in case it doesn't work, uh, then I'll repair it, and then uh, we'll go ahead and sell it back. But anyways, we should be all set here. I think the greenhouses and everything are good to go. Yeah, we do need some lime where I merge the fields together. Uh, see, these sheep, uh, they got grass, they're fine, the chickens are doing fine, and the horses are doing fine, and of course, if we check on the production buildings... Um, we got plenty of wood. Greenhouses are doing fine for a while. And of course, wool and, fat, uh, wool and cotton are just going to do what wool and cotton do. So I'm not going to bother uh, checking the store page again because one, they don't have the cash. And two, <laughs> I don't think I really need anything currently. So I'll see you in the morning. Well, at least we're starting off with a beautiful morning here in April. Our oats have grown. I do have to come over here and definitely put down the second stage of fertilization down before the crops grow again. First growth stage so I can technically drive through them and not without harming them, which we can. Uh, but got to come over here and grab the wool first thing before I get over to drilling just because the spinnery right now is not produced. It has no wool to produce into fabric. So, And next month is the month. To sell the fabric and of course why won't you grab now of course now I spun those around uh, 
yep, let's go ahead and just uh, turn on super strength and get off the aim marker there. There we go. Move those a little bit closer together. And actually, the sheep are producing so much wool now. I should be able to pick that up at some point. Maybe not. There we go. 2,600 liters right on the nose. Beautiful oats. Yeah, we'll have to come over here and get those fertilized some point today. Uh, the grass fields are ready also, which we're going to be making hay with that. Uh, just because our sheep are going to be a full pen, so we got to make sure they're good to go. And then the rest of the year we can kind of see how it's going with the hay and the sheep and the horses. And uh, I think we'll at least get one cut of silage in this year. And of course, we'll have the other grass field in about a month. Uh, the fabric should be sold next month, I believe, in the month of May. Fabric is looking really, really good. Turn that off. We'll leave that right here. So we made four pallets overnight. And uh, just barely starting the fifth. So, yeah, four pallets a month. We were getting three, but now we're getting four with the extra wool. So let's grab the Fiat. We'll stop at the store and top off with some seed. Let's go ahead and make sure I got this on sorghum, not oats. There we go. I think we got plenty of fertilizer. Just want some seed. Uh, got plenty of fuel in the Fiat, so we should be okay there. Well, let's go get this crop on the ground so our chickens can have some uh, food by the end of the year. And if the horses need it, well, uh, we can give it to the horses as well. I think we'll just back up to the silo and fill up from there. That way, just don't have bags always laying around here. So, $700 worth of seed. I'm beginning to think that uh, to fill up with fertilizer, I'd probably have to pull in like at this angle. So I actually lost a little bit of money overnight. I was uh, right around 8,000, just barely over it. Woke up this morning just below 8,000. Guess all depends on the price of strawberries. Okay, lower the drill. Turn her on here, and let's get the sorghum planted. And it shouldn't have any problem with the drill, I think, going uphill. This drill doesn't require as much horsepower as the cultivator does. I can tell the difference between where I've seeded and where I have not. I'll wait until I go around twice before I get out and check the field status to see if it's added the uh, the fertilizer is going in. So that'll be the second stage of fertilizer. So that's doing as I thought it would. But I'm wondering if I'm going to get the extra 2% from cultivating it. Yeah, I don't think I want to see directly right in that corner there. I don't even need to get up to as far as the tree is. Gravity. Not my friend over here. Yeah, I think I'll have to... I think after I harvest this year and get this crop out of the ground... 
will kind of eliminate the field at that end. That's, that's a little bit too steep. But next month should be a very good month. I do believe that's the month for fabric. And with that money, we'll be buying that grass field across the way. Then I think I'm going to hold off on buying fields with the money we get for a while. Maybe uh, pay off a little bit more of the loan just to help us out with the loan interest every month. As for buying any new equipment or anything like that, I don't think we need anything currently. I think everything we have is working out rather well. Although, the one thing I might do is uh, take $5,000 and upgrade the engine in the Deutz. When I was over here fertilizing with the Deutz, uh, the Deutz was having a little bit of trouble going up the hill just by fertilizing. I'm actually going through more fertilizer than I thought it would over here. But I think I'm getting used to the precision farming fertilizing Where it doesn't uh, take as much fertilizer depending on the soil type and all that. Alright, so after I get this headland done, I will get out, check the field to see where our status is. Now, it should be somewhere around 97 or 98 percent uh, yield capacity if the mulching did work, because I haven't rolled the field yet, which will give us the extra 2 percent. But I am hoping that with these two fields now over here, we're going to produce enough sorghum to go ahead and feed our chickens. And also the horses. I want to keep the oats in the silo for the training facility if I can. So by the time we get the training facility down, I should have about 16,000 liters somewhere of that for oats. Because I think we get about 4,000 liters of oats off that field. Looks like I may have to go buy some more fertilizer before I get done today planting these fields. Although the other field does not need fertilizer. And I'm trying to remember, will the drill, if it doesn't need fertilizer, will the drill actually put the fertilizer in the ground? I think it'll still use a fertilizer. So what I may do is empty out the drill of seed and fertilizer and just make sure a seed is in it. I don't want to be wasting fertilizer in the field that does not require it. Alright, so if I come over here... Alright, it's only showing 95%, so I'm guessing that cultivating does not count as as mulching. I mean, I'll get definitely a true test after we get done rolling the field. But if that's the case, then uh, yeah, that cultivator is not really what we need. Kind of answered my own question about the fertilizer in this field alone. When I go over a spot that I've already seeded and fertilized, even though it's got the double stage of fertilization already into it, it's still taking the fertilizer out of the drill, but it's not taking seed. So, kind of weird how that works, but yes, yeah, so when I go do the other field, have to empty out the seeder, make sure there's no fertilizer into it, don't want to waste uh, cash on, on that. So now when I make sure when I turn around and move around, I lift up the drill so we're not uh, putting fertilizer into the ground. And the reason why the texture will look different on the ground because where we merge the fields together and you merge field grass or sorry, uh, meadow grass into the ground, 
you get a stage of fertilization. So when I went around with the doits and fertilized before I started recording, that's the second stage of fertilization. So when I go over it with a drill, even though it's using fertilizer, it's not actually adding a fertilizing state. So that's why we get dark color, light color. So you can kind of see where the fields were last year or where there weren't fields last year. I'm thinking I can get this field done with the seed and fertilizer that we have. And then we're going to grab the roller and uh, roll the field. And once I get done with rolling the field, I'll definitely, I, I'm like 99% sure that the cultivator doesn't count, quite count as a mulcher. So probably just repair it and uh, return it to the store. And maybe we'll just uh, come up with a deal with a store like that's not what I thought I was hoping it would be. And maybe we can uh, just get ourselves a true mulcher for the same price. We did pay 10 grand for that cultivator. And the mulcher brand new is like 9,000. So maybe just do an even swap for it. it seems to be finding the gears a little bit quicker with the drill than it was with the cultivator. Yeah, I should have enough fertilizer and definitely enough seed. We're not, we're not going through the seed hardly at all. So I should have enough seed actually to get the other field done also. And as I mentioned in last episode, when we do buy that grass field, uh, it will remain a grass field until uh, fall time and we'll plant wheat or barley into it. But until then, we'll get as many cuts of grass as we can out of that field. That will cost uh, 39000 but we have plenty of money from the fabric. I think uh, starting to repay off that loan will help us on out. Part of me has thought about upgrading the sawmill because the sawmill is producing a good amount of planks. And if I if I double the production in the sawmill, that'd be great. But we're just getting so many planks of... Uh, we're getting so many pallets of planks. I don't have enough room to store it all. So I know there's a mod out there that we can store our pallets into. But as for right now, I don't think I want to do that. But I do, I would like to upgrade the sawmill, but that would be $66,000. We'll have a look at our chart in just a minute and see how much we're actually making off the planks in a year. Because it's, it'll be a full year in, I think it's July. It's either June or July when they, they need to be sold at the high price. We can see how much the sawmill is actually making just from doing the planks. And it, see if it's worth it to double it. See if I get my money back in a year. The spinnery, uh, I don't see another reason to upgrade that yet. It's going through the wool from the sheep uh, every month. But if that starts lacking from the sheep, then we'll have to upgrade the spinnery. All right, and there we go. Let's turn off the drill. And actually, let's just unload everything right here. So hopefully it'll just take the seed first of all. Good, it's taking the seed first. All right, we'll leave the fertilizer right there. I'm not going to go ahead and plant the other field yet. I'll probably maybe do that next episode. Uh, I want to go ahead and roll this field that we just did. Just to see what our true total is. And of course, uh, we can uh, also get done the grass field a little bit today. We'll mow the grass and tend it at the same time and get that kind of prepared for making some hay bales. All 
Well, I felt like cutting the grass first, so that's what I'm going to do before I go back with the roller. So, of course, we got the tether on the back, roller on the front. And the good thing is, uh, over here, since we didn't plant the trees all the way over, we got a whole bunch of meadow grass over here that we can cut. And nope, the trees uh, have, did not grow at all from April. Uh, sorry, March to April. But there's a there's the trees right there. I'm like, where are the trees? Technically, I can go through them because they're not uh, glidable objects yet. So we'll just go that far. So this should give us definitely enough hay for getting into next season. Luckily the sheep aren't going through that much, but also I do have the mod installed for them grazing on the grass, so basically what that mod does is it'll take the grass in their pasture and put it into the feed trough. Should get a good amount of uh, hay bales from this field, and of course that field as well. And next time we cut it, we'll make silage bales. I think the uh, grass field uh, on the other side, when we buy that with the money we get from the fabric, we'll make silage bales out of that also. And then of course store them, and we'll sell those in January. Fiat is doing some pretty good work with the mower on the front, wind drawer, uh, sorry, tether on the back. Doesn't slow it down at all. So it's just a matter of getting the grass cut, turning it over, letting it dry, which it dries instantly, but uh, we'll let it sit here while we go back over and roll our sorghum field. With the extra grass that we're getting from behind the sawmill and uh, the bale sell point, seems like we're going to have a lot of hay, so that's going to be good for us because that means if we do have a lot, we can make silage the other two times this year, cutting this grass. 
And I do need, once we get a good amount of money again, uh, I think I need to plant some more trees down. Uh, we did plant 40. I think it was 40. Um, yeah, I need to probably get another 40 trees planted in there because, yeah, they don't seem to be growing as fast as I remember they grew on Silver Run. But on Silver Run, I planted Lodgepole Pine, and here we planted Spruce. I think we planted those in December. Here we are in April, and they haven't grown yet. Not that I'm too concerned. We've got plenty of trees around the map we can cut. It's just that it'll be a little bit harder for us to get the wood there with our yarder set up. Uh, but I'm actually thinking if the sawmill does run out, or if it, when it does... Or even if it doesn't, I may want to give that uh, firewood splitter another try. I guess I just got real lucky with it when I was testing it on no man's land with the, the trees I was using. The trunks and all, everything was like the perfect size for it. And here, we, of course, we had a different variety of sizes. And from what you guys told me, I, I don't... It can be a little bit finicky, but you guys gave me a little bit of a couple tips. Try not to split the wood up into big chunks. Maybe just split it into twos. Because if there's not enough uh, liters of wood there, they will disappear. And, I mean, we leased that uh, wood splitter. And I think we did about three trees. And we got, like, pretty close to $9,000 for that firewood. Just for three trees. At least it covered the uh, the cost of the leasing fee for the firewood splitter. And we did make a little bit of cash onto it. One thing about grass work though, it does take a while. And with grass, you, you, you if you do it correctly, or I don't want to say correctly, uh, at least the way I do it, I do get three cuts a year at max height so it's a lot of grass fields are a lot of work you're basically doing three harvests a year although you don't want to replant them like other fields you got to go around and seed and uh, but they still need fertilizer the grass fields do and if you're using a roller well you definitely got to go ahead and roll it the same month that you cut the grass or else you're you're setting it back a stage Alright, so we are done cutting this grass anyways. Yeah, so I still gotta windrow that on up. We'll bale it, then get the bales out the field, and then roll it this month. But right now, we're gonna go over and roll the other sorghum field. Let me go ahead and just fold this on up. Should fit in there, but I'll fold it on up. Yeah, that grass field, uh, mowing those took a little bit longer than I thought it would. It made me actually thought about, could the Fiat handle the butterfly mower and the mower on the front together? But then, the other grass field on the other side, I'm only going to cut that once or twice, and then turn that into a wheat, barley field, sorghum field, whatever we need planted. So it's not gonna it's not like we're gonna have three grass fields all the time. And I think we'll be selling this cultivator that we bought today pretty darn soon because that uh, didn't quite work out the way I was hoping it would. I do like this map. It's a nice, uh, I don't know why it seems peaceful to me, but it's peaceful. It's a beautiful map. Sometimes the smaller maps, uh, through the years I've been always wanting to do a small map and I always end up doing the bigger ones. Um, but I just never really found a small map that I felt right for me and this one does feel right. Are we rolling? It doesn't look like I'm actually rolling it. really hard to tell 
but we are we sometimes you got to get uh, yeah this one says 98 percent but I'm so close to the other one even over here it says it needs rolling although we just rolled it so gotta get two headlands done I think so 98 percent in this field I don't know what the other field's gonna be because I don't know what the other farmer did to it because we're not really doing contracts on this map. Well, it's going to be really hard to see why I rolled and didn't roll because there is no texture difference on the field where I've been. So I'm at the ballpark it. I'm not going to quite get the quarter. At least with a roller. Doesn't require that much horsepower to go around. Yeah, there is a little bit of a texture difference there. Gotta really look close at it, but there's a slight texture difference. We really need this grain. I don't have any more feed to give to the chickens at all. And they are reproducing as we speak. I think the, the chicken coop is about half full. So adding these two fields to the list of getting crops off should help us out. But I'm probably going to buy some chicken feed before the end of the year. Well, before uh, we get to harvest time. So I can see a slight difference where I rolled and didn't roll. It'll be easier next year where I'm not going to have these all different colored textures because once we get a cycle on the field, it'll all be the same. And now that I got two headlands around here, if I come over here, yep, 98%. So the. Uh, the mulching didn't quite work out too well. Uh, since why does that say 83% yield bonus? But fertilize... Oh, needs lime. Ah, I'm not looking at the bottom. Yeah, there's... Uh, when we plow the fields together, they needed some lime. And I'm just waiting for another cycle and then maybe I'll get all the field done as one. Been a while since I've played without precision farming. Pretty much since Precision Farming came out, maybe about a month after it came out, when I switched over to a no man's land. Then of course we went to East Violin where we're using it. Silver Run? Did I use Precision Farming on Silver Run? I don't remember. Uh, but all we really had there was a grass field. I'm going to say no on Silver Run, but yeah, it was just a grass field we were taking care of. So it was pretty much mow, uh, wait a day, and then fertilize. Oh yeah, I, I completely forgot, but um, as I'm recording this episode today, it was kind of announced that the first uh, phase of the year two pass will be coming out on March 21st, which will be a... Uh, a baler pack or all, has to do all about baling which we kind of knew about but it's from the Australian company and actually uh, the piece of equipment that I saw which made like uh, was like the main picture uh, that was a mod back in FS17 which won the mod contest and basically what that will do is uh, you can bring your chaff over and dump it into this machine and it'll put it into bales for you. Uh, wood chips as well. But apparently this one here will do uh, beet pulp into bales, which seems kind of interesting and, and different. But it's a, it's a brand from Australia. Uh, I kind of... I, I had it written down, but I can't find my paper right now because my desk is a mess
but I'll be coming out on March 21st. And in case you didn't see it yesterday in my East Vineland series, if you're watching that, uh, spoiler alert, I was kind of talking about um, when that uh, update comes out, we'll be ending East Vineland and moving on to a new map. Now, there is one map that's already out there that I, if, if it came out tomorrow, I, I have a map to play on. Uh, there is another map I've been talking to the the person making it. Um, it's right there. They don't know how much longer it's going to be before it's done. I haven't seen the map, but from the details, it sounds interesting. Uh, but it's just a matter of, am I going to like it? And also, there is another map I'm pretty sure I'll be interested in. Although I'm not sure if it's actually being made or not. I haven't talked to the person yet about it. So I, I'll have about maybe three maps to choose from. Well, maybe two. Um, if the other one's just barely getting started, from what I've been told. Good maps usually take about a couple months, depending on how much time they can put into them. But usually I find when I talk to people making maps, it's, you know, two, three months for making a, a map from scratch. I should be really focusing on where I am because it's kind of hard to see the texture difference from where I rolled and didn't roll. So, kind of an an another bad business decision to start the episode buying that cultivator. Thinking that was going to give me the extra 2% here. It's not that big of a loss. I'm pretty sure after I repair it and bring it to the store, um, I may lose like uh, 500 to 1,000 bucks on it, but maybe we can just swap it out for a brand new mulcher. All right, a couple more passes and we'll give it a good look to see how I've done. Might be a spot or two there that I missed, but overall, I think we got it. Then uh, next episode is going to be pretty much the same in a sense. We got to plant sorghum in that field. We got to roll it. Uh, but then, of course, we got to windrow the grass and uh, bale that on up. And then uh, we should be done with the month of April. So if we come into here, there is one for rolling, isn't there? Yes, there is one for rolling. Uh, let me turn off fertilizer and lime. All right, so there's a few spots, but most of the field's done the corner, which I said I wouldn't get. And there's a tree right here. So I got most of it. So not too bad. Uh, as for fertilizer, let me take off the lime. Uh, for some reason, I missed a spot there and a slight little sliver there. And same thing in the corner over here. Uh, you can see field number 32, uh, which is next on the list. It doesn't need lime, doesn't need to be plowed. It's, it's pretty much all set and ready to go. Uh, and now I, I just need to, need to be ready to go, which we are. Uh, we got everything over here that we need. And we'll get that done next time. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Oh, before we go, before we go. Yeah, I was going to say I was going to check on something here. Uh, let me stop my tractor from rolling. Yeah, if you just jump out, that'll make it stop rolling. Uh, yeah, time savings check. So the, not wood chips, uh, where's my planks? Um, yeah, so even though we haven't got a full year, when we do sell our planks in July, uh, for the amount of planks that we got currently, we're going to get $76,000 in the ballpark. So upgrading the sawmill for 66000 I could sell these planks, upgrade the sawmill, and still make a profit on the planks themselves in the, then the following year. As long as we keep the sawmill running, we should almost double the money that we can uh, bring on in. Uh, you can see the fabric is looking pretty darn good. Actually, it says sell it in May uh, is the best time. But if you look now, the price seems to be the best now or the same price as it was uh, last year. So I may be selling fabric in this month, not in May. Let's go ahead and check on that then. Uh, fabric, fabric, fabric. So... 
Yeah, I think I need to sell it here in the month of April. So we'll have to get right on over to this grass field over here. What kind of condition is that grass field in? Well, it needs to be plowed. All right, so that's something to consider. Uh, it needs lime. And it hasn't been fertilized. But if I sell the fabric this month, I could just forget about the grass completely. Well, I wouldn't forget about it completely. It'd be a lot of work. I better slow down time here. We're going to got a lot of work now to do in April. So what we'll have to do is sell the fabric, uh, come over here, mow the grass because, I don't, you know, it's here. And then once we pick up the grass and probably just make silage with it, uh, we'll plow the field, get it all set, lime it, fertilize it, and then uh, plant more sorghum into it. Because why wouldn't you? Because we have the time. Uh, so now, now it'll be running at times one speed for now. All right, so we got a lot of work to do. A lot, a lot of work to do. A lot of repetitive work, but uh, it needs to be done. And it'll benefit us in the long run. All right, I think we're all set now. That's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching. As always, I'll catch you again right here in Solendra. But until then, have a good one.